a Christian has no business being depressed. When you need it, it will happen. The question is, who are you looking on to? Who are you looking on to? All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. That husband you are trusting God for, he can appear. That resources you are trusting God for, it can appear. That position you are trusting God for, even if there was none like that, it can be created. Because the one you are looking onto is the creator, the animator of reality. And they said in him was life. That means the substance of our being came from him. We have no essence without him. In him was life. You are not who you are because of what you are called. You are who you are because of the molecule of him that dwells in you. He is the substance of our being. Everything created. The Bible said he sustains all things by the word of his power. This is why even when it looks as if we will faint, something wakes up on our inside. Because there is a life that cannot be conquered that has been injected into our being. In him was life. Listen, brothers and sisters, there are three dimensions of life. There's the animal life. It is powered by the blood. The goat has it. The unbeliever has it. There is the soulish life. It's powered by breath. The Bible said in Leviticus 17, 11, the life of the flesh is in the blood. The animal life. He said in Genesis 2, 7, God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and he became a living soul. The life of the soul is in the breath. That's why every man, when breath departs, he dies. But there's another life that is only for those who look unto Jesus. It's the spirit life. It's called the way. Only us carry it. They all think we are the same. When they gather, they say we are all men. We are not all men. Some of us, in addition to being men, we are called new creation. We manifest God, we showcase God, we reveal God, we carry God because we have both bios, suke, and zoe. Do you understand this? See, this is why when you go to the office, when men are applying principles, apply with them. When you go to school, if men are reading, read with them. But when you get to a level where reading does not work, when you go to a level where connection does not work, if you go to a level where principles does not work, then you turn to the heaven's frequency. After a while, headquarters, navigations, transmissions, transmissions, and then they look at you. They say, 10 men got to this spot, they died. What happened? Why are you still standing? In him was life. The life was the light of man. The light shined in the darkness. The darkness comprehended it not. Everybody who came here was defeated. How did you come out? They looked up to him. Their faces were radiant. They were not ashamed. Everybody who came here was frustrated. Why are you still sober? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He said, whoever is born of God, overcome the world. This is the victory that overcome the world. Even our faith, we don't fall where men fall. We don't fail where men fail. Because there's another life supporting our existence. In him was life. In him was life. There is life in your blood. Every other creation have it. There's life in your soul. Every other man has it. But there's a life in your spirit that only you and those born of God have. Not everybody have it. This is why we look up to him. So that he can animate that life. So that he can invigorate us through that life. I'm talking about the stature. When the Bible says look up to him, the author and the finisher, that means your starting and the guarantee of your finishing is a function of your connection to him. Every other thing is secondary. There is a reason. He has the, the capacity. He has the stature to be in that position. And he said in him was life 
And he said, the life was the light of man. That's why the Bible says we know more than our teachers. They say you have an unction from the Holy One. And they say you know all things. First John 2, 20 and 27. He said you need that no man should teach you. He said that unction teaches you all things. Even when you are in error, he said you hear a voice behind you telling you. He said, turn, this is the way to go. You don't read that in a book. That one is the light that comes out of your spirit. Because when it comes into you, it becomes the illumination of your life. And so you are precise even without your intelligence. Develop your intelligence as much as you can, but there's a realm where precision comes beyond intelligence. Because that life is the light of men. So if men don't look up to him, they are doomed. No matter how much they study. Because in the journey of life, you will contend with men. You will contend with the falling world. You will contend with demons. And you will contend with principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Your intelligence stop when you stop dealing with men. The moment you enter falling creation, you are dealing with realities that are older than the existence of man. The moment you deal with demons, you are dealing with realities that are wiser than the wisest of men. And the moment you deal with principalities and powers, you have come into a circuit of gods. Fallen beings that walk in the paradise of God. They have the secrets to the operations of the realm. They are wiser than you. The only way you can have an advantage is when you connect to the one who created them. That's why you become more ancient than they are. In him, was life. And he said the life was the light of men. This is why we are invited to look up to him. He was in the beginning. He is God. He is creator. He is life. And is the light of men. No being sits in that office. Only one sits there. His name is Jesus the Lord. What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. But what if I told you, God never intended for you to live in fear? In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me, give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up, even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical Steps to Overcome Fear So, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's word. 
The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily, remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things, it's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter four verses six to seven tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number three, take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward, through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.